Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be making a void function. Uh, so void function just doesn't return any sort of type of, uh, it doesn't have a return value. Like our main function here returns a zero, it returns an integer. Uh, previously we looked at other ones like they return a double or return a boolean type. Um, the void function just doesn't return anything. Now that doesn't mean that it can't do anything. It can, you know, modify numbers or it can uh, print something to the screen, something like that. So. We're actually going to make a program here that's going to call a void function, and that void function is going to modify some number that the user inputs. So let's start off with the main function here. Start off with an integer a, we'll just call it that, uh, and then we're going to see out something to our user to ask them to input that number. So we'll say enter a number, okay, just like that, and then we'll have our user c in um, a. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to call some function um, to modify this number outside of our main function. So we'll go up here. Uh, the function type, like I said, is void. Let's, we'll name the function. We'll just call it modify because that's what it's going to do. And we're going to pass in a variable that is uh, actually by reference. So we're going to have int and you use this and sign after to signify that it's by reference. So it's actually going to change whatever we're passing in. You'll see that in a second. For example, if we pass in this actual integer a here, this actual variable a will get you know, updated. So we'll see that in a second though. So, and, and, and let's just call it z here, um, you know, for inside the body of this function. All right, so uh, what we're gonna see now, like obviously the, the person would enter the number and we see in a, um, and we wanna, now this is the point where we would mod, we would call the function now where we need to pass in an argument and we're passing in a. All right, so let's go build the body of this function. Uh, we're gonna start out, you'll see what we're gonna do, like we'll, we'll provide the user with some options about how we can modify this number. So we'll say something like this, see out, um, pick a modification, and then I'm gonna use these escape sequences for backslash n just to bump down another line. And we'll have option one, something like this, it'll be like, add one and then we'll bump down another line just like this and we'll have uh, for option two it'll say like minus one and let's give it a third option if we really want and we'll have option three would be something like uh, times two all right and then we'll just have one last thing here saying to our user saying your uh, selection is and we'll let them type in which selection they want so this is probably looks a little confusing to you right now just because it's all this backslash or some things, but the reason I did them is here. We'll just run the program so far and you'll see what's going on. So basically it's saying here, enter a number. Okay, so let's put in some number five. And now it's saying pick a modification that I spelled wrong. And we have three choices. And then this is your selection is. So first of all, let's fix up that typo. Uh, and then we'll let the user pick which option they want. So we'll have to have, um, We'll just define some other integer. We'll say int temp, and this is going to be the uh, the option that they're going to select, and then we'll have them enter that. So C in temp, just like that. So if we go build and run this now, again the program's not quite done yet, but you'll see at least kind of as we go how this code is starting to develop. So again, we'll pick some number five, and we want to modify this. So if we selected one, ideally we want to like end up with the result of six, or if we pick two, we want to like minus one, ending up with the result of four. And if we pick option three, we want to multiply by two, so we'd be ending up with an option, all right, final answer of 10. So anyways, we'll pick something like that. We haven't we haven't programmed it to do anything yet, but at least it's like it's allowing to us to receive, you know, our, our input. All right. So then all we have to do now is we just set up our if statements. So we'll say something like if um, Z is, oh no, sorry, if temp is, uh, equal to one. So if the user selects number one from that drop down menu that we just had, then we're going to say that Z is equal to Z plus one. Okay. And so that Z is the value that we're passing in here because it's by reference, we're actually going to add, you know, they're passing in this integer a, so we're actually going to physically change the value of integer a inside the main function. All right. Uh, now let's also say if um, temp is equal to two, what was our option? It was minus one. So Z will equal Z minus one. Or not equal, we're assigning Z minus one into the space for Z. Um, and then also we have if temp is equal to three, um, we're going to have, what was that, times two? So we'll have Z 
we're going to say z times 2, just like that. All right, and then um, let's, see what, let's see what happens now if we run that program, or the updated code. All right, save all. So we enter our same number. Now we make our selection, let's say selection number three. Okay, still hasn't done anything yet. So we need to actually update this. So we have to see out to um, we have to see out to our user. Something like this. Um, we'll use again backslash a and a backslash. Uh, we're, we're just doing this to get the quotations right. You'll see here. We'll say integer <laughs> integer a. has been updated to, and then we'll see out the new value of A, right? We're, we, haven't, we haven't done anything else here. So the user inputs A, like we've been using five, then we're gonna modify it, and it's gonna print out that same variable, but I bet you anything it'll be different this time. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end line, just like that, okay, and then return zero. Notice here, there's nothing, we're not saying return anything here, so just keep that in mind. All right, so we'll save that, and let's go ahead and run this program now. Okay, so enter a number five. Now we're gonna pick from one of these options. So we have five plus one, five minus one, or five times two. Well, let's pick option number one, five minus one, or five plus one. So there you go, integer A has been updated to six. And the reason why um, I used these backslashes here is just because it's an escape sequence for the quotation mark. So it doesn't think we're beginning and ending strings. All right, so that's kind of cool. Um, let's just run through each of the options. So we're gonna, well, let's just keep using five, for example, and then we're gonna use option two. Now five minus one, you know, integer A has been updated to four, and this is literally changing integer A, because we're printing integer A here uh, in the main function, and uh, if we didn't use this and sign here, it we would have been passing by value, and it wouldn't actually be updating, wouldn't be able to update anything outside of the scope of this uh, of this function here. So there you go. Um, and we'll do the last one. So enter a number, let's just do five. And then we'll put in the option three. And integer a has been updated to 10. So there you go, five times two. Now, if you want, we could put something, we could type here return and then just a semicolon and not actually specify anything. Um, that works just fine, but uh, it's it's unnecessary because we'll, we can do this thing and uh, we'll get exactly the same numbers that we were before. So if anything, if you just want to save a line of code with a void function, you don't need to say return. So anyways, that's just an example of how you could use a void function to do something, you know, by uh, modifying some other number, um, you know, in your main function. Again, we can just do this one last time. We're looking at that. Yeah, so put five, you know, whatever. Um, something to note is I didn't put in like a, I, I didn't put in um, I could have done else if, 10 equals 2, else if, 3, and then else. I didn't put any protection here against if someone picks a 4 or a 0 or something like that. That could simply be done with like a like a while loop or something or an if statement, you know, just kicking people out of the program if they put anything less than a 1 or greater than a 3. But that's not the point if else statements are not the point of this tutorial. It's just to show you that, hey, we can make a void function and we can we can call it from our main function and it can change stuff in our main function without actually having any specific return value. So there you go. I'll see you in the next video.